Hi everybody, this is Bo Sanchez here in Kerygma TV. So excited to be able to be there right now in your home. I pray that God will speak to you in a special way. We are now in the third part, third installment of our series, Fullness. And we've just been so excited being able to marry two seemingly opposing poles. And now we're going to talk about sacred and secular. How can you bring them together? This is going to be a blessing to you. Open your heart. Allow God to visit you today. God, we pray that in our moment together today, that you would open our eyes and wake us from within. Wake us up from our slumber. Wake us up from our grogginess so that we can see you face to face in all your glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hands. Give God some praise today. Come on, everybody. Could you shake the person next to you and say, wake up? Wake up. Make sure the person beside you is wide awake. Hallelujah. How about this stage, huh? How about this stage? My gosh. I feel like I'm about to host Miss Universe. Thank God I brought my coat. Let me explain why. This week, Jollibee, the, the fast food chain, they had an event all week long, and they're still gonna use the stage tomorrow. So we thought we might as well use it instead of tearing it down for our own purpose, all right? Big companies use PICC at least once a year for their big events. And you know what got me thinking when I heard that? We do the same thing too but every week. Sometimes we forget because we're here every single week. We turn PICC into a playground that we forget how blessed we are to be in such a fantastic venue. Would you agree? God has been good. God has been good. Listen, before I, 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 I uh, continue, I want to give a special shout out to the graduates of our Lux right there. All the married couples who renewed their relationship just this weekend. Thank you so much, guys. If you are looking to strengthen your marriage, you might want to consider the Lux Couples Getaway. We're going to have a lot of announcements leading up to that event, all right? Thank you so much, guys, for coming. We are on the last installment of our series on fullness. We are learning how to begin with the end in mind. Have you been learning something from the past few weeks? Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. We have been learning how to find harmony between two opposite poles. What did we have the first week? We had goals and gratitude, right? Last week we had self-love and selflessness. Today, today we're gonna find the balance. We're gonna find harmony between what is sacred or what is spiritual and what is secular. Are you guys ready for that? All right, then let's do this together as a family. Everybody come in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Throw your hands in the air, everybody. Come on and say, Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Lift your hands in honor of God's word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I'm going to give you our one big message for today. I need you to preach it to the person on your right. Could you turn to the person on your right and tell that person, God is here. God is here. That's right. God is here. Our reading comes from John chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, somewhere around 1 to 3. And it says that on the third day, a wedding, everybody say wedding. A wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. And Jesus' mother, Mary, was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. 
When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. I'm going to stop the story on that verse because we all know the rest of the story, yes? We all know how Jesus proceeds to, to fill up six stone jars with water and then he turns the water into the best tasting wine. We all know that story, right? We all know also that this is a very relevant and significant, significant part of history because this is, the, this is the first time that Jesus performs his miracle. And you know, many preachers have spoken about this message. You might have heard one preacher do a sermon about this verse. But I want to ask a very simple question that I believe many Bible scholars still ask to this very day. Of all the places and of all the events that Jesus could have chosen to perform His first miracle, why did He have to choose a wedding at Cana in Galilee? See, when you read the verse, there was nothing special about the wedding. I mean, weddings in particular are special. Married couples, would you agree? Yeah? The husbands better say yes. Because your happiness this week depends on that. There was nothing special about that wedding, historically speaking. But weddings, of course, are special for the couples, for the families, for the friends. But you know how special that wedding was? It was so special that John did not even bother saying the names of the bride and the groom. All he said was that on the third day, a wedding took place. That's all that we knew about that wedding. And the place wasn't even significant at all, historically speaking. Did you know that if you today decide that you want to go visit the spot where Jesus performed this first miracle, nobody's going to be able to point you out in the right direction. Unto this very day, for centuries now, people have been debating where that spot was in Cana, Galilee. Nobody knows. That's how insignificant that place was. Are you with me so far? Now, what's my point? Why did Jesus choose that event and that place to perform His first miracle? You want to know why? Come on, a little louder. You want to know why? Ask me why. I'll tell you why. You would think that it was so complicated, but really it's very simple. It says that on verse 2, this is going to blow you away. It says that on verse 2, Jesus and His disciples had been invited. When you're invited to an event, what do you go? What do you do? You come. The reason why Jesus was there in the first place is because He was invited. Now, there are people who go to parties even though they're not invited. They're called gate crashers. But Jesus was invited. So what's my point? Everybody say, what's your point, Brother Audie? Many times, my dear friends, we come to church and when we leave these doors, we tell God, all right, Lord, see you next week. We leave God in church and then we go about our life doing our thing. We make God a one-day activity for the week, like we're checking, going to the grocery or, or taking gas or whatever. And yet we expect God to show up in the extraordinary spaces of our life. Like, God, I need, I need you this week, all right? I need you to show up because I, I'm, I'm going to be traveling. I need your protection this week. I need you to show up. God, I feel sick this morning. Could you show up? God, I need some provisions today. I need you to show up. You're expecting God to show up in the extraordinary times of your life when you need Him the most, and yet you're missing Him in the ordinary spaces of your life. You would be surprised, my dear friends, surprised to see where God will show up when you invite Him. You know what I found out? I found out that God will show up even in the most random situations, even in a car, an ordinary situation when I'm driving, you know, in traffic. That's my usually my prayer time with the Lord. That's when I worship Him. That's when I speak to Him. You know what I decide? The moment I decide that that commute, going to work, will become my chapel, God turns my car into His altar. God shows up and shows me His presence in the ordinary situations. That's right. But we're always looking for God in the special moments. You don't need to wait for a significant event in your life for God to show up. Because the way I see it, Jesus will show up whenever, wherever He's invited. As long as you invite Him, He's there. And you know, when you start thinking about it, 
again, we've already established it. There was nothing extraordinary about the wedding. Nothing. It was just a simple wedding, a family wedding. You know what was extraordinary about it? The fact that Jesus showed up. Because you know that when Jesus shows up, miracles happen. Are you waiting for a miracle in your life? Who needs a miracle? Lift your hand. Maybe the only thing that you need to do to gain that miracle is to invite Jesus. Maybe you can start this week to invite God in the small spaces, the ordinary spaces. When you're going to the grocery, when you're talking to a friend, when you're driving to work, you don't need to wait for a big event. You can start with the small stuff. That's where God wants to be. One more time, everybody say, God is here. Tell the person next to you, God is here. Tell the other person, the one that you didn't choose the first time, that God is here. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands and thank God for this beautiful message, beautiful word. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the ways that you cared for us and protected us this week. Even though the times we knew we didn't even feel you, we knew that you were there in the background working. We thank you and we ask you, Lord, to open our eyes today to be able to see you and experience you in a brand new way. We give you the honor, the glory, and the love now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. One more time, let's sing to the Lord. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my hand. Give the Lord a big hand, everybody. Before you sit down, can you give a high five to five people and just tell them, God is here. God is here. And then I want you to pick one person, maybe your favorite person here. Put your hand over your chest. Look that person in the eye and say, God is here. Amen. Wonderful. Please be seated, everybody. Touch somebody beside you. Tell that person, God will speak to you today. third installment of our series where we try to harmonize two opposing, seemingly opposing poles, but then in the end you realize that they're not opposing after all. Goals and gratitude, talk one. Talk two was self-love and selflessness. And today we're going to talk about sacred and secular. Are you ready? Everybody say, I'm ready. You know, one day there was this guy who came up to me and, and he said, you know, after the feast, he said, Brother Bo, can you pray for me? Pray for my boss. I have a horrible boss. Are there people who can identify? Be sure to raise your hand only if the boss is not here. The guy said, you know, Brother Bo, my boss is horrible. He is a King Kong in a Barong Tagalog. And he said, he screams at everybody. He insults people. He humiliates people in public. And he will curse you from head to toe in six languages. And I said, man, that, that, that's scary. And then he said, that's not all. One day, my boss came to me. And he, he, he invited me to a prayer meeting. And of course, he was my King Kong boss. I mean, you can't say no to that, right? So I go. And so when I went there, you, I could not believe what I saw. I mean, he was there. You know what I found out, Bo? I found out he was an elder in that prayer group. And guess what? I just sat dumbfounded right there, sitting in my chair, looking at that guy, my boss, my monster boss, greeting everybody with a smile, <laughs> hugging people. 
And then when it was worship time, there he was. His eyes were closed. He was worshiping God. I mean, I say to myself, what in the world was this? You know, the first thing that came to my mind, Bo, werewolf. You know, werewolves, they're, 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 they're human beings by day, and then werewolves by night. My boss is reverse. He's a werewolf by day in the office, and then in the prayer meeting is a human being. And I said, wow. And he, can you just imagine, Bo, he's an elder in that prayer group. And I said, that's not the feast, right? No, no, that's not the feast. <laughs> yeah, you know, because everyone in the feast is sweet and nice and kind. <laughs> in my dreams, I'm hallucinating, right? And he said, no, 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 it's, it's, it's another prayer group. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and do you know why things like that happen? Ask me why. why? Louder. Why? Because we divide what God has not divided. I, I believe this with all my heart. We, what, what happens if you, if you look at Scripture? I'm, I'm going to go through. I'm going to go through Luke chapter 12, verse 28 and 31. The religious leaders wanted to catch Jesus. And they would give him some trick questions to be able to catch him. And this is one of the trick questions. Let's read. A teacher of the law was there who heard the discussion. He saw that Jesus had given the Sadducees a good answer. So he came to him with a question. Which commandment is the most important of all? Can we read that together, please? Which commandment is the most important of all? At that time, there were, the religious leaders knew that there were 613 laws, 248 do's, and 365 don'ts, and that there was these 10 commandments that were given by Moses. So they were thinking perhaps Jesus will pick one of the 613 or one of the 10, and, and hopefully there will be a fiery debate, and then, and then they'll be able to catch Jesus saying something wrong. But Jesus gives a brilliant answer. In verse 29, Jesus replied, The most important one is this. Listen, Israel. Let's read together. Listen, Israel. The Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. What, what you see here, you know, if, if you were a Pharisee at that time and you were listening to Jesus and Jesus said, This is the most important of all. You know, I bet in my imagination, the Pharisee would say, Whoa, he didn't pick one of the 613. He didn't even pick one out of the 10. He chose this. Whoa, this guy's good. You know why? Jesus picked the prayer that the Jew would pray every single day, morning and evening. Shema Israel. He would, you know, and he just quoted that and he said, this is the most important thing of all. He, he got the very obvious and said, this is the most important commandment. But, everybody say, but. Jesus kept talking. It's like he wasn't finished. He said, that's the most important thing. Love God with all your heart, with all your mind. With all your... And then he says, verse 31, the second Everybody say, the second most important commandment is this, together. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no other commandment more important than these two. So Jesus first gives the most obvious, and He says, it's there in your prayer, morning and evening. You say this, listen, O Israel, the Lord is one God. Love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and... He got something a little bit more obscure. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And, and he puts it together. The genius of Jesus is putting it together and say, they're one. You can't separate. You cannot divide these two. They are inseparable. Everybody say, both laws are inseparable. You know, when... Jesus came 2,000 years ago when God became man. What happened was He sanctified everything. And everything becomes sacred because of Jesus. Can everybody say everything is sacred? He sanctifies your breathing. 
He sanctifies our walking and our waking and our eating and our sleeping and our snoring and our peeing and our pooing and everything about us. He embraces our physicality. The, the doctrine of the incarnation is so powerful because of the fact that when Jesus came, He makes all of us and all our activities sacred. Every time I think, you know, when, when I said pee, peeing and pooping, it's like some of you were saying, huh? that's sacred. Yeah, that's sacred. St. Therese of Avila is my favorite story about that. Are you familiar with that story? She was praying in the toilet, and then the devil appeared to her. And the devil said, mocked her. How dare you pray while doing that in the toilet? That's why I, I think she's really a saint. Because if the devil appeared to me while I was doing something in the toilet, I'll never go to the toilet again for the rest of my life. But you know, St. Therese of Avila, she just smiled and said, What leaves my lips goes to God. What leaves my butt goes to you. Everything. Can everybody say everything is sacred? There is no separation between the sacred and the secular. The reason why you've got King Kong bosses in Barong Tagalogs who they, they separate. They, they're, they're one person in church and another person in the office. You cannot do that because everybody say God is here. When, when you are working, God is there. When you are in church, God is there. When you're at home, God is there. When you're in the toilet, God is there. Are you listening? This is the truth. You cannot say, I'm loving God and I'm loving God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength in church. But God said, Jesus says, no, you've got to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And you love that. And, and, and you love your neighbor everywhere you go. There's a, can everybody say this? Everything is worship. Everything is worship. The biggest crime, the biggest mistake of Christians, of Christians, is that we separate that which God did not separate. And what I, when, when I think about Jesus, I think about this. He lived for 33 years. And he did his ministry work only in the last three years. That's where he did all the preaching and all the proclamation and all the mission work and all the healing and all the raising of disciples in the last three years. What did he do in the first 30 years? He lived a regular life. When he was a toddler, I imagine him to be in the lap of Mama Mary. When he grew up a little bit bigger, he was running with his playmates. When he grew up a little bigger, his foster father, Joseph, taught him how to hold a hammer. A few years later, he had crushes on girls. And then he would have shish kebab with his friends. Think about it. The Son of God, the second person in the Trinity, the Almighty, the Alpha and Omega, the first and last, the beginning and the end, the one that, think about it, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, living an ordinary, human life for 30 long years. Everybody say, God is here. God is right there. Everything is sacred. What Jesus did was He sanctified the ordinary. We think that God is present when we pray but absent when we play. We think that God is present when we read the Bible, but absent when we read a business book. We think that God is present when we attend Mass, but absent when we watch a movie. Everybody say, that's a lie. Because God is present at every moment of our life, if, what Audi was talking about, if you invite Him. 
Am I making sense to you? If you invite him in every area of your life, he will be there. One woman came up to me and said, Brother Bo, can you pray for my husband? A lot of wives come up to me and ask for prayers for their husband. And I kind of like have this, you know, because of the many years that I do that, I, I kind of like know what I'm supposed to pray for. <laughs> you know, unfaithful husband is number one. Alcoholic husband, <laughs> number two. <laughs> but then she came up to me and said, Brother Bo, please pray for my husband. My husband is a prayer group leader. That's new. What do you want me to pray for? And she said, he has no time for us. Every night, he's in a ministry meeting. Every night, he's just, he has time for everybody. He has no time for me and my kids. And then when I tell him, when I tell him that, you have no time for your family, he will always say, God comes first. God comes first. God comes first. And then with a tear escaped her eye. And she, she said, last night, Bo, my son, he came up to me and he said, Mom, why did God steal my dad away from me? And I told her, tell your son, God did not steal his dad away from him. Tell your son that your, his dad is just deaf. God has been telling your husband to go home. But this is what happens. Ask me what? To some religious leaders, they use God's work to escape God. God is a God who says, meet me in church, and we go to church. But God is also a God who says, meet me in your family. And some people escape still to church. God says, meet me in the office. And we don't do that, we escape to church. Are you getting what I'm saying? Every time I promote my financial seminar. For example, I teach the stock market. I would get nasty comments, and I'm used to it. It's there in my Facebook account. Comments of people. This is what they usually say. How dare you? You mix God and money. I don't answer because I think it's useless. If people like you, no explanation is needed. If people don't like you, no explanation is enough. Do you like me? Okay. <laughs> Just checking. But if I was going to answer that comment, how dare you? You mix God and money. This is my answer. It is the call of every single disciple to mix God and money, to mix God and business, to mix God and marriage, to mix God and relationships, to mix God and recreation, to mix God and every single area of your life. My dear friends, if you will allow God to stay in church and you lock the door and you leave Him there, you're not a disciple. You are not a follower of Jesus. Your goal, my goal, my mission is to bring Jesus wherever and to say while watching a movie, God is here. While, while I'm paying my bills, God is here. While I'm in the office, God is here. While I'm in school, God is here. While I'm watching a movie, God is here. While I'm playing and, 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 and playing with my kids, God is here. While I'm laughing and, and eating pizza with my friends, God is here. God is here. God is here. That's the message. That's the mission. God is here. Matthew 27, verse 51, 50 to 51. Jesus, hanging, in the hanging on the cross, about to die. And he's, he says his last cry. Jesus again gave a loud cry. 
and breathed his last. And something happened. Then the curtain, everybody say that to me, the curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Read that again. Then the curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When Jesus died, the moment Jesus died, how far run in from Calvary to Holy of Holies? Very near, a few hundred, a few hundred meters, 400 meters. Ronan is the guy who, and Sahara, they, they bring us to in Jerusalem and Holy Land. They... Let me explain what happened when Jesus died. Jesus died here in Calvary, 400 meters away was the temple. The temple of Jerusalem was large. The periphery of the temple, that's where the court of women are. That's where, I'm sorry, the court of the Gentiles. That's where non-Jews were. And, and they could only, they're the saling pusa. Okay? They, they, they were just there at the periphery. And then a little bit inside the temple is the court of women. That's where the women uh, would, would worship. And then inside further is the court of men, the Jewish men. And then further inside is the court of priests. And right there, smack in the middle, you call it the Holy of Holies. That's God's address. That's where God lived. And, and in that sacred, sacred, sacred place, they, they, they dared not go in, except once a year, the high priest would go in. And he was, you know, it, it was this terrifying presence of God that if you would go, you might die. And so, because you might die, they tied ropes around you, the high priest, and they would put bells on his clothes. And, and what happened was he would there, go there once a year. Why the bells? Why the rope? Well, if you know the priests the other priests will be outside the holy of holies and they'll be listening if there will be still the sound of the bells because the moment the bell stops sounding they might say oh no he's dead god killed him and why the rope tied on around his waist so they could pull him out pull the body out but when jesus died on calvary Right that moment, the Holy of Holies did not have a door. The Holy of Holies had a curtain, a very thick curtain from top to bottom. That curtain is a symbol of the division between the sacred and the secular. And the moment Jesus died, that curtain was torn from top to bottom. And Jesus is announcing the Holy of Holies is now there in the human heart. You are the Holy of Holies. And everywhere you go, you can say, God is here. You can say, God is here in my family, in my marriage, in, with my kids, with my, with my work. Do you, do you want God to be in your family? Every single day when you wake up, or when you're serving your husband, you're serving your wife, you're serving your kids, serve God. I've been serving God in ministry for almost 40 years. How's that possible though you look 30? Never mind, just almost 40 years. At the age of 32, I, I started serving when I was 12. Started preaching when I was 13. At the age of 32, I got married. When I got married, the day I got married, I made an internal switch that my identity shall first of all be a husband and a father and second only as leader and preacher. That switch was very important for me. And I was still very, very, very busy serving in ministry, but my family came first, always. And my son is now 12. My other son is now 18, celebrated his birthday last week. Both of them I have never heard them say, Dad, you're too busy serving God. You have no time for us. 
never, never. And, and that's why I think both of them want to serve the Lord for the rest of their life. Do you want to prosper in your office, in your work, in your business, in your investments? Bring God there, please. You are not serving your boss. You are serving your God. You are not serving your customers. You are serving your God. When you do that, then you are bringing together the sacred and the second. Can I invite you to pray with me? Everybody say, Father in heaven, I thank you for being here. I invite you into my life. Every room, every dimension, every area, every activity of my life. Be King, be Lord. I want to follow you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for His grace and His power and His love and His peace and His joy to flow more into your life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Sovereign the mountain air, sovereign on the ocean floor, with me in the car, with me in the storm. Greatest joy, sovereign in my deepest cry, with me in the dark, with me at the dawn. In your everlasting arms, all the pieces of my life can be dead to the end. I can trust you. In your never fail. Sing. Sovereign in the mountain air, sovereign on the ocean floor, with me in the calm, with me in the storm. Sovereign in my greatest joy, sovereign in my deepest cry, with me in the dark, with me at the dawn. Your everlasting arms, all the pieces of my life, from beginning to the end, I can trust you. In your never-failing love, you work everything for good. Now whatever comes my way, I will trust you. God, whatever comes my way. Oh, my hope, all I need, held in your hand. Oh, my life, all of me, held in your hand. Oh, my fears, all my dreams, held in your hand. Come on, this is be a prayer. Jesus.
wallet or from your phone, that's that'll be great. If you didn't bring it with you, lift up all the dreams in your heart. Just say this after me. Father, I thank you that you have planted dreams in my heart. You have given me a mission. You've given me a vision. You have a plan for my life. And I say yes to that plan. But I will not go if you will not be beside me. And you are beside me. And you will always be with me. Everywhere I go, I will say, God is here. And by your power in my life, I declare my dreams will come true. Amen. Pull my hopes, all I need. Hail me your hands. Pull my life, pull the feet. Hail me your hands. All my fears, all my dreams. Hail me your hands. somebody beside you and just tell that person God is here just want to say thank you for you know Audie was talking about how special this place was that you know companies would rent this out once a year but we had the privilege of using it every week so you know what what a joy what a joy dude what a gift what a gift my gift yes thank god for this place thank god for this place thank you thank you but my gift that i want to thank god for is you you make this place special it's always the people. I pray for you every day. You know that? Wherever I go. I just, I just landed yesterday from Japan. I'm flying to Singapore tonight for, for a, a little business meeting tomorrow. Wherever I go, I, I bring you with me in my heart. I pray for you. And I'm, I may not be able to shake your hand because we're so many. I may not even know your name, but I pray for you. And in the language of the Spirit, wherever love is, it's powerful. And so good. Thank you so much. Thank you for the privilege of serving you. Thank you. Thank you. Wherever I
I am so blessed because you are watching this show. And our purpose is to be able to bring you into this love of God, this celebration of love to heal and to transform your life. And I want to say thank you to all the partners who've decided to say, yes, Brother Bo, I want to be your partner to be able to help the ministry. From the bottom of my heart, just want to say thank you. Once again, if you are not yet a partner, please do join us. For any amount whatsoever that you want to send to this ministry, I'll give you this, a thank you gift. Talk number one of our series, Fullness. Send it to your home so that you can show it to your friends and watch it at any time. For a gift of 2,000 pesos or more to the ministry, I want to thank you by not only giving you one talk, but the entire video series of our series, fullness. This will bless you immensely. Plus, I'll also send you my book, Enjoy Your Age. And this book, I'll teach you how to claim your blessings for every season of your life. I want to send the video series plus the book, send it to your home as my way of saying thank you. The contact details are on the screen. Do tell us that you want to be my partner and I love to send this all this material so that you can keep growing in your spiritual life. Thank you so much. This is Bo Sanchez here in Kerygma TV. Live a fantastic life. <laughs>